We're with Professor Juliana House in Wuhan, in China. Yes. Juliana, welcome. What are you doing these days? I am uh, I retired from the University of Hamburg mm -hmm. about 10 years ago. Really? And now I am a visiting professor in Dalian University in China, okay. visiting professor in Beijing University of Science and, and, and Technology, yeah. and also a, what they call a distinguished professor mm. uh, in uh, Hellenic American University okay. in Athens. So are three different places. So you're not really I, retired. Uh. I'm not retired, although I'm getting a little bit older, but I'm still yeah. You're active. very active. Still, I'm still yeah. active. Yeah. I have finished my latest book in 2017, mm -hmm. which is all with Routledge, and it's called Translation the Basics. Oh, I, I give it to my students. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a nice companion of what I did. It's not as nice as the 2009 Oxford little book, if you know that. Mm -hmm. 120 pages, took me three years to do it, mm -hmm. but it's, a, it's very well done so, because it so took me so long. That's the good. reason. Yes. Absolutely, yes. Okay. <laughs> good. Uh, we know you, though, as an applied linguist or translation scholar or somebody who's bridged those two disciplines. Yes. Is that yes. fair to Absolutely. say? Absolutely. Actually, I'm originally, I'm, I studied uh, translation in Heidelberg. Mm. Katharina Reis was, oh, my, right. was, oh, really? my, was my teacher. Okay. And uh, then I, um, I, I worked as a, as a, as a translator yeah. for Procter & Gamble, All right. uh, an yes. American... Uh, Pharmaceuticals. Uh, pharmaceuticals, yes, exactly, yes, yes, and all yes, sorts yes. of other things. Yeah. And then I emigrated and actually then I did all my degrees again in Canada because I couldn't use my translation degrees, which was in English and Spanish. Nobody was interested in Spanish oh, in, in Toronto, where okay. I lived then, right. because, and, and everybody spoke English, so I okay. couldn't sell my English competence. Okay. And so I started uh, studying again, Bachelor of Education, taught a little bit English, right. then did my MA and PhD, okay. and that was the translation quality assessment okay. thing. Okay. And yeah. then I actually went out of um, translation studies yeah. for a while mm. and did a lot of contrastive Pragmatic contrast yeah. discourse analysis. Which Lots. is really good stuff. Yes. I really like yes. that. You know, Why did you leave translation studies? Was it uh, I not wanted satisfying? To, I, I wanted to do something new. And then I came yeah. back and actually then my good friend, who unfortunately died early, Gideon Turi, mm -hmm. very good uh, old friend, he said, Juliane, you have to do something. People are stealing your ideas. It's really true. <laughs> and then it was Gideon. We cited you. <laughs> no. And, and then, <laughs> then I, I actually revised the model in 1997 because Gideon said do something. And then I came back to translation study. 1997. Okay. This is a revised model. And then I started, basically stayed there. But did also other things. But you've done lots of other things. I did, I did this know, misunderstanding, analysis, comparative, misunderstanding exactly, book I love. Uh, second language learning, yeah. second language teaching, yeah. and all this, you know. And academic writing. You were, also, you yeah. So I, 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 there are many, many, many different yes, research yes, projects. Yes, yes, yes. How do you choose a direction? Um, is it just interest or...? It, it, or it's interest it? and, and also particularly I worked in a research center in Hamburg Research Center on Multilingualism, which is basically my uh, covert translation idea. Mm. And the idea then was, of 12 years I chaired this, how English as a global language, through massive translation direction, mm. influences other languages, yeah. German, yeah. French, and Spanish. Yeah, this is in academic writing. Yes, especially. yes, yes. yes. That, yes. That's yes. when yes. And we looked at, we set up a corpus, we looked at texts in the, uh, the two genres, science, popular science, and business, mm -hmm. because we thought these are the genres where English would be most uh, influential, influencing yeah. the, uh, yeah. whatever. And we found yeah, at the end of after 12 years, we couldn't really say it was translation, because English is everywhere. It could, yeah, yeah. could just be that languages change of their own on their own, basically. I don't think... So it's not, not only translation. So you started from the idea of covert translation. Yes. Can you explain that idea? Covert translation is my, my two types of translation, going back to, um, not, I can't think of the, of the name now. Your model, the, the, <laughs> Your translation assessment, whatever. Yeah, yeah anyway, so the covert translation is a translation where the translator is free 
to use what I call a cultural filter mm -hmm. to change the, 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 oh, okay. the, the original test, test as he as he thinks is fit. Yes. Yes. So the, and, and it, the name covert comes from the fact that many people, when they read this translation, don't even know that it's a translation. Yes, yes, For instance, yes, yes. in advertising, in letters to shareholders, in all sorts of okay. uh, everyday type texts. Mm -hmm. Now, the other uh, 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 type of translation, which I call overt, is a translation where the translator leaves the, the text intact as mm -hmm. much as possible, mm -hmm. given the two languages. Yeah. For instance, speeches by famous people. Yeah. I, I analyzed in my original model the speech by Churchill in the second during the Second World mm -hmm. War, where he basically said to the soldiers, "Fight the Germans, etc." If I, as a German, read that, I know that I'm not meant. <laughs> you see, <laughs> so that is, is a very good example. So okay, the translator right, right. leaves it intact, yeah. and overt means people know it's a translation, and you can see the translation has yeah, yeah. foreign elements, right? But th then you've gone beyond that. You say uh, studying the influence of English on academic yes. writing. Yes. Yes. It, it's the same process, but it goes even further. Is, yes. Is yes. there then a continuum between translation and all cross-cultural meaning transfer or something? Yes. We're, we're living in a world. Lots of people around us say, "Oh, translation is everything." Yes, basically. absolutely. Are yeah. you yeah, yeah. a believer in that? Uh, I, I basically, um, what I don't believe in that some people say. We're not translating language, we're translating culture. Yes, yes. And I, I be, don't believe in this, because translation is basically an operation on language. And I'm a linguist yes. by profession, yes, yes, yes. right? Culture is important, but it's not everything. And well, nowadays... And is culture separable from language? It, it, it can't be. It can't be. And I don't also believe, I don't know about you, dear interviewer, the, these so-called terms. Oh, you I'm know, giddy. I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> against it. With the cultural term. It's, what do you mean? It's always culture always comes in. We don't need a specific term for that. Yeah. Mm? No, right. no, no, no. Or the linguistic term. No, Linguistics it's, it's, is out. Or the ideological term. Or the sociological term. No. Translation is so big and so all um, encompassing that we don't need to separate and say this is culture mm. or whatever. So that's what I. You, you seem quite critical then of. Of the way translation studies has developed. Yes, it's it's too much. Um, actually, I gave a talk yesterday about this. It's too much looking at what I would call translation at large, mm -hmm. which means not the, the translation with the text and the language, mm -hmm. but at large, oh, the yes. whole context, yes. feminist studies and ideology and all of all of this. Stuff. When people are more interested in this rather than looking at the core, which is there's a text and you translate it, mm -hmm. you can look at all the influences outside yeah. but not only yeah yeah not yeah. or not only looking at that yeah. at core it's a it's a linguistic operation but if you analyze this you have to take all the the environment uh, yeah, yeah, into sure. account yeah, sure. yeah. like the culture and the sociology etc yeah. etc et yeah. it's all all, all in, in it very good but we should we shouldn't forget that it's basically an operation on language and i'm a systemic functional linguist as mm -hmm. you know how about Holiday, exactly. And his disciple, uh, Matheson, oh, okay. in, uh, in, in, in Hong Kong. Right? Very good. I'm doing a lot of uh, external supervision for okay. his students. Excellent. Yeah. Last question, Julia. Yes. What kind of research would you like to see more of yes. in translation? In the, uh, recently, with a, a good friend of mine in Budapest, Hungarian Academy of Science, where I'm also associated with, we set up a new journal called Contrastive Pragmatics. Mm -hmm. To, uh, if this is free, uh, uh, free access, mm -hmm. uh, financed by uh, lots of people from the Berlin University. Mm -hmm. And we not only want to publish um, uh, studies in contrastive pragmatics, but also translation, language teaching, applied linguistics, oh, yeah. very broadly conceived. Mm -hmm. So I believe what we need is more serious contrastive pragmatic studies with different in different genres. Mm -hmm. Example, how you write an abstract, let's say, in Chinese versus in English, in Spanish, in German, etc. Right? Mm -hmm. Or all sorts of other genres that you can contrast with. We need sure. more contrastive pragmatic as basically as the as help for the translator. Okay. To sure. know how how a different text are or formulated. Helpful writers. Con or helpful writers. Yes, yes. How they are conventionally construed. Mm -hmm. This I think this is very important. 
Another thing that's important is, is the history of translation. Mm -hmm. And there's a definite gap. Contrastive pragmatics and the history. Uh, historical pragmatics, also a ah, wonderful, okay. a wonderful right. field that we need to... So you would like to see more yes, linguistic more, approaches to translation history? Yes, that? absolutely. Just to look, sure. yes, or pragmatic, whatever. Yes, yes. Um, I Pragm don't, what, what do you mean by pragmatics then? Well, pragmatics is <laughs> language in use. Thank you. Basically, different text types and sure. genres, okay. and not 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 theoretical linguistics, yes, which yes, is yes. absolutely useless for translation, like Chomsky uh, okay. and generative. We don't need this at all. Okay. I don't think we need more research in machine translation because there is, as we heard from my dear friend <laughs> Professor <laughs> Anthony Pym, oh, yeah. there is already <laughs> a lot of a lot of. He's here somewhere. Um, he, there is already a lot of research going on with, yeah. with big money behind it. So uh, we don't need more well, research. Well, let's become mathematics these days. Absolutely, so, uh, absolutely. We we'll leave that to the lab. Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you Thank very, you very much. much. We, we have lots of help from the Chinese people in the restaurant. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you very much.